all right guys so fulu coming to you with another video i hope all is well with you guys um we're going to talk about that welterweight division or excuse me we're going to talk about that lightweight division a little bit um as i said in previous videos devin haney just needs to vacate uh lightweight and move up you know he should just move up to uh junior welterweight and call it a day like if honestly it is not befitting of him staying at 135 okay it really isn't because at the end of the day he's not being respected at the end of the day um he's basically holding on to a belt that you would think would be the belt that has relevance you would think that would be the belt that would be the missing piece to the puzzle To be undisputed but that's no longer the case so that's why i'm saying he should just like forget about it he should just let bygones be bygones move up fight a couple of fights at 140 so he can get accustomed to the division and possibly make a run out of strap at 140 okay because when mauricio suleiman says that george cambosis is undisputed then it just like causes so much confusion it causes so much confusion because of the simple fact that you have the regular wbc belt you have the franchise wbc belt you have the interim wbc belt so you're like your brain is in the jigsaw puzzle trying to make sense of it all so if i were again i'm going to repeat myself if i were Devin haney or if i were any um black uh champion or potential champion to be i would like i would honestly boycott and sue the wbc i would actually sue them because it's the same thing with erickson lubin how many eliminators do you have to fight before you get a um before you get a title shot you know i'm i'm not gonna sit here and cap while erickson lubin no while they were waiting for the castano uh charlo rematch they could have had a fight in between the WBC could have ordered um, uh, Charlo versus Erickson Lubin in between. You know, they could have easily did that, but they didn't. Okay? And the reason why I think they didn't is because they see the workload that Erickson Lubin has been putting in. They see that, you know, the, the loss, at, again, I'm going to say at the beginning of his career was a learning experience he learned from that and now he's a whole different animal everybody sees that so now what i'm saying is that um in the interview i think it was fighthight.com they actually said that combosis was undisputed so at this point i'm asking myself okay devin haney why hold on to the belt because he's not going to get the respect from the WBC, nor is he going to get the respect from the fans. Because here's the thing. You have Lomachenko fanboys saying that Devin Haney ducked Lomachenko. But my question is this. Devin Haney was adamant about fighting Lomachenko. When Lomachenko had the WBC belt, okay? He was trying to petition to be Lomachenko's mandatory. That's what he wanted, okay? He wanted to fight for the belt. If you look at Breakfast Club and all those, like, all those, uh, like, interviews he did, that is the main thing he said. He said, I feel like I can beat Lomachenko, and if I lose, I lose. I'm not afraid to lose. He said that, okay? So... Fast forward, Lomachenko asked to be a franchise champion, okay? He asked for it. So Mauricio Suleiman has gone on record and said it in an interview. Um, Lomachenko asked to be a franchise champion, and then he just gave Devin Haney the WBC regular belt at the roof, Chris, okay? He said, here you go, sign on the dotted line, this is yours, okay? So how can you call him an email champion when he wanted to fight the guy, but the guy didn't want to fight him? That's my thing. I, I don't get it. Like, I'm trying to wrap my mind around that logic. 
Okay So I'm gonna be real Devin Haney did what he needed to do against Jojo Diaz I'm gonna be honest with you He did it But I'm gonna be real Okay As a Devin Haney fan he looked kind of sluggish in that fight and I really think it has to do with the weight okay that's what I'm thinking it has to really do with it's the weight okay he's really a big 135 pounder I don't know how much Devin Haney walks around that but it's really killing him and I just really believe that it is in his best interest to vacate that belt okay and I guarantee you as messed up as it is, if he vacates the belt, they're going to say, okay, Cam Cambosis is not undisputed. Cambosis and Lomachenko will fight for all the marbles. I guarantee you they'll pull that move, but he has to sacrifice at this point in time. Because what's the point of holding on to a belt where he's paying sanction and fees for something that, in, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, it doesn't even really exist anymore. You know, it really is. It's just something that I'm going to give an example. I'm going to give an example. I'm going to take it back to the old school. You know how this country will say that, oh, we're a trillion dollars in debt, but yet it prints money out of thin air, basically, and we're supposed to be in debt? It's kind of like that with this WBC situation. It's like... They're, they, it's like, okay... Cambosis is undisputed. Devin Haney is not recognized as a champion. But yet, his belt still exists. It's crazy how a made-up belt has surpassed the original belt. I was under the impression that with the franchise championship... This is what I was under the impression of with the franchise. I was under the impression that when you become a franchise champion you become a franchise champion for life even if you lose a fight you cannot you, you won't be you won't be um stripped of that franchise championship that's the impression i was under i was under that impression i wasn't under the impression that um basically you, you, you lose the franchise championship if you're defeated. Because when you read the description of it, it says that like you'll be. It's basic. How how can I explain this? The way I read about the franchise champion. It kind of made you believe that it was like a country club of some sorts where you get special privileges and you're recognized for certain things because of your status as a franchise champion. That's what I was under the impression of. Well, all of a sudden it becomes a real belt that surpasses the regular WBC belt. I don't get it, bro. So at this point, for Devin Haney, just move up to 140, bro. Cambosis is going to fight Lomachenko. Um, his now we can talk um, self has now been even more inspired by Mauricio Suleiman's comments. Because now he's going to walk around and flaunt undisputed. And as I said before, if he if he doesn't have to fight uh, Devin Haney, I don't think he he's gonna fight him. I think the fight he wants is Lomachenko. That's the fight he wants. Okay. That's that's gonna be the fight that he's gonna take. Okay. He's gonna take the Lomachenko fight, and that's just it. He's not gonna fight um, Devin Haney. Because then it's like, okay, I'm going to end this video on this note. Because I'm thinking about how dumb this will play out. Okay. So. You're undisputed, right? 
let's say Devin Haney, hypothetically speaking, beats Cambosis, right? He beats Cambosis. So he becomes undisputed. However, what is going to be of his regular WBC title? Should he just throw that away in the trash? Since, it's, since pretty much with Mauricio Suleiman's words, it's not really a belt anymore. You know, the franchise championship has taken precedence over the regular belt. And I'm going to keep on pressing this issue, man, for real. I, if, if they hear this video, I seriously advise Devin Haney and Erickson Lubin to sue the WBC. I advise them to not even fight for a WBC belt anymore. I really advise and I, and I advise more fighters who have to go through all these stupid mandatories to fight for the belt to not even bother doing it. You know, because when I'm looking at this organization, it's, it's pretty much run worse than the mob. Hell, it's like ran like the damn CIA at this point. Well, anyhow, man, let's see what happens, man. Hopefully what will happen is Devin Haney will take a fight at 140. And, you know, Devin Haney said he fancy fighting uh, Supeda. I think that would be a good fight for him. And then maybe he can fight Regis Prograce. There shouldn't be any network issues since Devin Haney is a network free agent. Um, he said he fancy fighting, uh, you know, um, who else is a 140 he mentioned that he would fight? He said he would fight Mikey Garcia. So, you know, these are all fights that can happen, man. So with that being said, I think that he should just, he, he honestly should uh, just move to 140. It makes no sense just to stick around, you know? I, it makes no sense to do that, you know? But, and he's in a lose-lose situation because what they're gonna say now, for example, you have the new uh, 135 coming up who looks promising, who looks like he has the skill and stuff. Um, what they're gonna say now is they're gonna say, um, Devin Haney is ducking Jose Valens, uh Suela or something like that. So it's no point. He should just move up to 140. Devin, if you're listening, drop the WBC belt, move up to 140 and start from scratch up there. Fool is signing out. Leave your thoughts, leave your comments, like, and subscribe. And Jarama.